declaring millions as their running costs. How do you feel this represents Nigeria on the international stage or on the international stage right now? How do you feel we're being represented by our leaders internationally? Very, very shameful. We shouldn't be talking about buying jets today with the level of poverty. We can't be poverty capital of the world and be buying jets. It shouldn't be. Even when I'm still questioning how much was the cost? We, we said we are replacing the old one. What is the age of the new one? Why did we need to replace the old one? What is it? If I'm wrong with it. For me, that shouldn't be. Every penny today should be directed about pulling people out of poverty, in health, in education. Because this is where we are lacking. These are development trajectories where we are lacking. When compared with similar countries that we are supposed to be at par with, we are low in human development, in education. Our health is worsening every day. Where we've even taken India in infant mortality. That's why the fact that there are people are hungry. They don't know where the next meal will come from. So every penny should be directed to that. And that's what I hear everywhere. I've been speaking to people from other countries who are talking, listening to the Prime Minister of Kosovo speak this morning in a meeting, listening to former Minister, uh, Prime Minister of Denmark speak. Everybody is talking about the people, the people, the, and the ordinary people. And you can see what I'm telling you about the ordinary people. Where chairman of the ANC is so, a son of a single mom who was brought up by the grandparents. Similar we, to Obama. Everything. So we want to create a society where a child of nobody who rise up due to productivity and be somebody. We have people's talent and hard work who match up the opportunity in life. The results NMPC showed, because we reviewed, is at variance to what was even written at the introduction. You have high level of debt that cannot be explained. The problem, as stated by Tilewa Adibaji yesterday, is that they couldn't even convert those assets into proper revenue. The forward sales that are exorbitant. Still today, yesterday I tried asking an NPC that where are the items they spent seven billion on on their charities that they called orders? They've not answered us. So you have forward sales of about five trillion. You have about four trillion expending costs on refineries are not working as we speak. That's nine trillion, and you are celebrating a profit of three trillion. A lot of deep pits needs to be blocked. That's why Tilewa Adebaje was saying yesterday that if we probably reconfigure some of these OML and OPL licenses and we take less equity there, maybe we could sell off those things to be able to get some more capital in and free the NMPC. What say you, sir? Well, um, if NMPC has made so much like this and then we are as a country which NMPC is a cash cow, first of all, we must know who is the owner of NMPC. So if they have made so much profit, who are the shareholders? Bear by the PIB law, that means the shareholder of NNPC is the Ministry of Petroleum and the Ministry of Finance. So by now, they should be rejoicing that they have so much money. And in turn, this money will find their way into the Federation account. But you must, you must understand that they, they have already made it known. Remember, there was a memo before the result came out that they have already said that, you know what, we are not going to be paying profit dividend to the federal government for the next, in short, maybe for the next six months or to the end of the year. So whatever profit they are declaring now is what we we'll call in financial cycle paper profit. <laughs> I, I, I listened to Roto's analysis also of, of it. He brought us some very stemming. Um, 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 if you have overhead costs and the least paid NMPC staff is in about 100 and something million. Now you understand why their water have to crash the day they decide to open it for people to, to apply. Because if I'm ending up to that amount, in, I'm not going to jack by anywhere. <laughs> I'm going to stay here. That is one. Mm. When you look at that overhead cross, it's monumental. Mm. Then you look at also the charitable thing that you mentioned mm. about. I mean, the only 
name the bread bread was no pen and pengensi yeah. and then the second one they brought out there was nmpc foundation the other ones I saw in a lot of secrecy. There's some conferences as well that they organized. What, 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 who with the conferences with who and mm -hmm. who are those? Remember, there was a particular ministry that went to a conference in London. So they didn't give us detail where these conferences take place. I can assure you, most of these conferences might even have taken place outside the shore of this country. Maybe that's why they are not putting it there. So if I am an investor, I want to invest in Nigeria, and I want to look at Nigerian company who is a cash card in NPC, with this result, I will not. Why? The result is coming late, eight months after, and your overhead cost is so blotted that we're even expecting more overhead cost because if you are employing now, oh, you are not shipping out anybody. Yeah. So when you look at that with a long-term future, and it's supposed to be a, a public company, and if NPC was listed in the exchange, today that means the share will be on offer. Nobody will buy. Because if I declare profit of three point something trillion, and I view me as a shareholder, I'm not going to get anything. What's the, what's the benefit of investing in that company? So I normally say NPC is like a tower of Babel. <laughs> we are just there. We have been looking at it. Some people have called it the Tower of Corruption. <laughs> There have been so much name to that tower in Abuja. I've never entered. That's a good thing. All right. So let, let me come to this tower of Babel, tower of so corruption, <laughs> in your words. One of the things that was highlighted by um, yesterday's interview with uh, uh, Mr. Tilewa Adebajo was corporate governance. That what, some of, one of the biggest challenges of NNPCL as an entity is lack of corporate governance. And this would probably address some of the things you've mentioned, including the overbloated wages, because the board of directors should be able to, um, you know, structure salaries, wages, and ensure that it's fair and competitive across industry standards. What are some of those things that must be put in place? Number one, first of all, would you identify that as one of their key challenges? And number two, as an attractive, as an organization that is attractive to investors, what are some of those corporate governance structures that must be put in place? Number one, corporate governance releases the result when it's when due. Okay. That's what brings corporate governance. Um, give it to Malakiari. Um, at least they were able to bring in the results. Sometimes before now, we didn't even get any result for NMPC. They brought in about a three years result at a time. <laughs> so we couldn't even comprehend okay. what happened last year, what happened the other year. But they promised that they would be up to date in their results. Because that's also, if they are looking at being listed, that's also is part of the listing condition. Corporate governance. Like I said, if they were in the exchange, after your third quarter, after your first, after three months, they give you a grace of three months. After three months, if you are not releasing that result, that means every day there is a fine. So if NMPC had been listed in the exchange, it would have been paying fine that maybe it wouldn't be, I think about one million every day. Unless there is, like the financial sector, they will say, okay, the regulators have not approved, they will write for extension, and that extension can only be given for one month. So if that, if that's what corporate governance, that's why we are praying that NMC should be listed. Mm. So maybe that's the only way we can have corporate governance. That is just the only, the main problem with NMPC is not in profitability, it's in corporate governance. Because if it's corporate governance, all those entities that you are now putting in secrecy, you bring it out. Well, but they have a board currently. They have Who's a the chairman board? of the board, <laughs> Chief Pius Akinelu. Let me give you he's, something he's about the board. The board. Chair. You, you said, if, who, 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 who is their regulator? I just told you about the stock exchange. Mm. If you talk about the bank, who is the bank regulator? Before the bank result will be published, it must be seen by the um, central bank to look at it through it. Yeah. If, um, if, if those co companies like manufacturing sector, yeah. before they, they, will, they will get into the exchange. NMPDR is part of their regulators. They Thank you very sector. much. Yeah. NMPDR. Yeah. They are, uh, well, what do I know? Well, are they regulators in only in importation of product or making sure problems are gone? Or they are financial regulators? Who are NMPC financial regulators? NMPDR is part of their regulators. Exactly. So that means the regulators are not doing their work. They have become part of the system. Because if you go take it, the, 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 auditor, the editors that audit these results have done a good job. I don't know who the auditors are. Maybe if you bring... PwC. PwC. Yes, PwC. That, that is not corporate governance because they also more about by the NMPC. 
Because it's corporate governance. That's also their international organization. They should know. If I have to release my result quarterly, I will release it. So now, what is lacking in NNPC is corporate governance and because of lack of regulatory supervision. Mm. Now, who are the other regulators that have more power? It's the shareholders. Yes. So the shareholders, who are the shareholders? Okay. The, the same Ministry of Finance and Ministry of uh, Petroleum Resources. So they should be saying, okay, why can't we have a dividend in this company? You see shareholders come and vote against the board and say, no, we sack this board because yes. they are not giving us productivity. But again, you have to ask yourself, is the PIBB really in existence? No. So if you don't have the PIBB, then there's no corporate governance already. Because that means they're not, there's just a name, nomenclature have changed to NNPC Nigeria Limited. You said, he said something, you said something in the report, when you look at those, I mean, we didn't have the report. You said, Petroleum Refinery, uh, Portaco Refinery have not given us a single crude. Or the, the refined petroleum product. The four refineries us. are taking close to four trillion, and they are not giving us any. Remember money. that before now, I remember they even I listened to one of the advert in this very arise, where they told us that Portaco refinery will start producing by December. They came in, they move it to January, they move it again to March. March, they move it again, okay. and the NMPC CEO Mark Harris said, "This time, I'm not lying." Has it been lying all those while? Corporate governance. Because if that is your cash cow, you know, look at say crude oil sales. Like you said, they didn't put up the overhead cost that comes with crude oil sales. The vessels, the other forward payment, like you said. The reason why we keep on shouting oil theft is that because we are not even producing more. So when they steal it, we feel the pain. Mm. <laughs> I want to ask you, you know, look, you are fantastic. You come on the Global Business Report all the time. We talk stocks. I want to, I want to talk about how we can put up the cost of goods, um, cost of goods sold from the um, results. Um, fuel subsidies, PMS under recovery, they flashed it at three trillion for fiscal year 2023. But they've also now said that the federal government owes them. I think it's about seven trillion now in the twelve months up to um, I think July. So if you go from year on year from July to July, and you've as you've mentioned, if you were a shareholder, you know that um, dividends are now being paid to uh, take care of fuel subsidies. I want I, I've asked you about fuel subsidies in the past, but can you? I, this is it is literally if we were looking at a bank or looking at a manufacturing company or an oil and gas company. Subsidies as an expense impacted their uh, financials. It is impacting dividends. Can you please share your thoughts on fuel subsidies See, in Nigeria? When it comes to subsidy, or uh, I mean, whether it's subsidy, or, <laughs> subsidy the or the recovery, or whatever name you call it, it has been shown in a lot of controversies. And that's why I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, what I, where I stand, subsidy should go. Okay, that's what I wanted to hear. Subsidy should go, and I still stand that subsidy should go. And why do I say subsidy should go? Is because of things like this. Now, subsidy should go, and then why should subsidy go in the petroleum sector? Rutos, if your cash cow, if your salary is where you make your income and everything, and everything in your salary will go to, to lectures, luxury, luxury living, then how will you grow? Right. Our cash cow is not supposed to be where we should be getting subsidy. We should be getting more profit from our cash cow than subsidizing all aid, other areas that are not capital intensive that can help grow. Our, why are we removing? Uh, why are we not subsidizing electricity in the manufacturing sector? Why are we always subsidizing only for subsidy to a few? Mm. Mr. President came in and said subsidy is gone. I celebrated it here. And ordinarily, when subsidy is gone, the, the people that should benefit from it is NMPC. Mm. They are the only sole importer of petroleum products right. to this country for the past seven years. Correct. So they have monopoly in that sector. Mm. So, so, but when you look at it, I think we analyze it once. You say subsidy is gone. And you've asked me, saying one word, is subsidy gone or no? And I told you, if I look at what the crude price was at then and what it is now, I'll say there's subsidy somehow. But maybe it's not up to what we used to pay before. That is what I can, I mean, even if you look at that result, that's what would, would have been happening. But again, in terms of the subsidy that NMPC pays, it's not good for, it's showing a lot of controversies. Now, if you look at that result, they are taxing banks for windfall, windfall, tax, yeah. windfall tax. 
NNPC make a loss, they say, due to exchange rates, about $889 billion. Yep. Yeah. That's close to a trillion. Yeah. That's yeah. a trillion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On a policy. And that's why we said subsidy should go. But again, NNPC, if you look at the report before then, where, they, where the president have to extend dividend to them by that report, was made to understand that despite the removal of subsidy, the floating of the Naira actually has a negative impact on them, and we are seeing it now. Okay. I want to come in here. You see, my argument has always been, if you don't fix the structural problem, you don't fix Nigeria. And you can't afford to punish the people before the, because of the excesses and the corruption in the system. And I'll give you an instance. Prior to the Aikimokwede committee that was set up under Good Luck Jonathan, the subsidy regime then was that the marketers were bringing in oil. Those were the good old days of Ifan Yoba, Ba, Capital Oil, Big Tank Farms, they brought in petrol. And how they claimed subsidy then was they would take whatever they brought in, put their LCs forward, and say, okay, we brought in XYZ. But then we blame the marketers. If you read that report by Akimokwede, it was famous to have said some of them were even bringing water in and calling it fuel. So from there, we said the marketers were the what? The problem. Then we said, oh, we are going to streamline all of this. Let NMPC take over because uh, that's government. We should trust governments. Today, we are blaming NMPC for the same thing, insincerity that we blame the marketers for. Number one question is, when are we going to fix the structural corruption problem in Nigeria? The second question is, another line item we saw there, NMPC in that report claimed they spent close to a trillion naira to ensure security. And crude oil theft have never been this high. Can you help me reconcile the figures? Okay. For your first question, in Nigeria, we don't have corporate, I mean, especially when it comes to federal entity. You don't have... Um, corporate structure. You have powerful men. And when powerful men come in, they take charge. Mm. And when powerful men go out, they will go back to the status quo. Before now, nobody heard anything about NDLs. And, uh, NDLE. NDLE was like a dead cow. Mm. When Bubamara came When Bubamara came, they, you see the kind of arrest. Is it that all of a sudden, they so much, the drug barons became so many, they were not there before. That is a strong man. Mm. Agricultural sectors tried because we had an Akimi additional that was a minister. Yeah. He came in there, he made that sector so boom, ba, ba, ba. that was a strong man. So, any institution that, if you look at Navdak, when Dora was there, that was a strong woman. So, we don't have structures. We don't have structures. So what we should be doing in corporate, in corporate Nigeria is to run Nigeria as a corporate entity whereby there is structure. Today, the president of America cannot just come up and do, a, 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 I mean, anything mm. just like that because yeah. there's a structure there. Yeah. So that's the problem. Checks and balances. Check yeah. and balances. There's no checks and balances in Nigeria when it comes to that. Now you're talking about, um, the second question was about um, insecurity. Insecurity. It's quite about close to a, oh, but a again, trillion. But again, almost at a time. So, yeah, yeah, so, so in, insecurity, let me tell you, I, I might little disagree with you based on the result we have on ground. Because they say crude oil output has improved to 1.3 million per day from a low of over 700,000 yeah. barrels. So you could All give right. it to them that with what they're putting in security, it's, we are seeing some little results. It's making a headway. 